Nigeria should scrap the 1999 Constitution and adopt the 1963 Republican Constitution. This is the position of Professor Itse Sege. And the federal government and the Delta state government differ on the £4.2 million Ibori loot payment. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The Chairman Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Professor Ise Sege S.A.N., is still in the news and this time we're speaking about his opinion on the constitution to be adopted by the country. He stated that the 1999 constitution should be scrapped and that the 1963 Republican constitution be amended and adopted as the country's constitution, saying that it contains all that is or that we're being agitated for in the country at the moment. Well, joining us to discuss this sir, is uh, Barista Obinna Chuku, and also who will be joining us is Gide Ologun, both of them legal practitioners. Thank you very much, Barista Obinna, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, let's 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 start from you know the idea of the 1963 constitution being recalled in 2021. Um, does that constitution really have what Nigerians need? Is that what we want as a country right now in 2021? Okay, um, I do not think that uh, the 1963 constitution has all that Nigeria needs to, all that we need to move Nigeria forward. But I also will agree to an extent that there are things, or there are a few things that we need to maybe take a cue from, take a cue or borrow from 1963 constitution. But to say that we should go back to 1963 constitution, uh, to me, will be a kind of a retrogression. It will be a retrogressive move. But however, there are things, some few things in the 1963 constitution that uh, we need to uh, take and uh, possibly uh, adapt it to uh, what is happening to the situation, to the current situation in Nigeria, in order to move the country forward. Can I ask exactly some of the things that you would point to in that 1963 Republican, I, I'd, I'd like to underline that word, Republican constitution, that might help us in today's Nigeria. Let's not forget that Nigeria has really evolved. And of course, we're not we're no longer regions as we used to be. We're now 36 states, including the FCT. So can you point out some of the things that might be adopted for Nigeria in 2021? Okay, number one is that time. Uh, though it was not, uh, it was not the 1963 constitution that brought about that, but uh, somehow that also, uh, uh, were also incorporated in the 1963 Constitution. One, one of those things uh, is, uh, one, the autonomy, the regional autonomy granted to the then three regions. In fact, the West and the, the, the West and the East had autonomy in 1957. I think August 2nd, 1950, August 2, 1957, then followed by uh, autonomy also granted to the Northern region in 1959. However, that also uh, was incorporated in the 1960 constitution and again in the 1963 constitution. Then uh, another thing again that, uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is in the 1960, 63 constitution that uh, we may also have to adopt 
is uh, the issue of having a leaner or a, if I use the word, not in pejorative form, but uh, having a weaker center that is trying to reduce the items in the exclusive list. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the audience uh, needs to know that uh, the items contained in the exclusive list are the ones that the federal government can handle, can legislate upon, or uh, make policies regarding to. So the 1963 Constitution had a very a linear the items, unlike what we have in the 1999 Constitution, where uh, the federal government uh, somehow overnight became an octopus that, uh, that has uh, its hands in everything. And that's the number two. Then the number three uh, thing that we have in the 1963 Constitution that I think we may have to try to... Uh, 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 to use or to uh, adopt inside the issue of having parliamentary system of government. Because if you look at what we have, the 1999 Constitution, 1999 Constitution made governance too expensive. In the 1963 Constitution, the ministers are also members of uh, the House of Representatives, meaning they are part of the legislature. So they take one salary. When they are elected as a member of parliament or as a member of the, uh, legislature, the uh, Federal House of Representatives, then again, if the prime minister so decide to appoint some of them as ministers, they don't get two salaries, they don't get two allowances. The same one that they have will also will also be. Hmm. So by that, we will, we will, by a great extent, reduce the cost of governance. That's number three. Then again, uh, number four, number four is the issue of, uh, uh, okay, what is in the 1963 Constitution that uh, if, if we adopt it, will also help to reduce the cost of governance. That, that um, that is in the issue of region. I mentioned that because if we go back to region, it therefore means that the regional government, it therefore means that the regional government will will not create local government, uh, create local government councils within their region, and will have to find a way to fund it. But, but I, I'm, I'm curious why we would, we so would I'm curious why we would I'm sorry these, uh, for John South. I'm curious why we would have to go back to regions. I mean, again, it's 2021. There are states in different parts of the world. Well, there's nothing wrong with having a state, but um, I do not know if it's a very novel idea, I'm, I mean, I'm asking, for us to go back to regional government. Again, we already have local government no, councils. No. Um, we already have local no, government I'm councils. Sorry, I'm not advocating that we should scrap the uh, 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 state uh, government or, or the state system. I'm not advocating that, but what I'm saying is that the reality on ground today has provided us with cis geopolitical zones. In the cis geopolitical zones, uh, like for instance, the Southeast has five states. The South South has, uh, has six states or thereabouts. So if we decide to regionalize Nigeria, it has to be uh, along the six geopolitical zones. Okay. The states will still remain there. The regions may also have the power to create more states if they can fund it. But uh, regarding the issue, regarding the issue as to which of this system or pattern of governance as uh, will serve Nigeria better. I think regional government will serve us. Then again, I, I, I didn't mention that another thing that should also be taken from 1963 constitution is the issue of uh, allotment of resources. Allotment of resources. Mm -hmm. In the 1963 um, uh, 
constitution with less uh, allotment or less percentage of uh, the resources that comes from Nigeria goes to the center, whereas mm -hmm. the larger chunk goes to this uh, to the uh, to the regions. Okay. So, to me, about the, these five items or five issues mm -hmm. can also be imported from the 1963 Constitution. But to say that we, we need to go back to the 1963 Constitution, hook, line, and sinker. I think that that will be retrogressive. We, okay. can, we can still, if we regionalize and grant autonomy, the most important thing there is to have autonomous regions. Okay. If we have autonomous regions, that will drive competition among the regions. All right. I can tell you that the fourth generation universities that we have, that we have in this nation, mm -hmm. we, are a, a, we are mainly a product of competition. Because okay. when the Southeast came in, the, uh, uh, um, the Eastern region came in with an idea to have a university, which is a uh, 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 University of Nigeria, in Soka, that was about in 1958 or, there, or thereabouts. After the establishment, finally in 1960, other regions immediately followed suit. There were also other things too that uh, South uh, or the Eastern region or the Western region had to borrow from Northern region. So mm -hmm. that will drive competition. Competition. Okay. Um, so let, let's go back to what Professor Ise Sege uh, had been proposing um, because he said that this is his opinion on how we can restructure the country. Um, he also proposed that um, there has to be certain amendments here and there, just as you have said, um, to make this constitution, if we did decide to go back to it, that's the 1963 con constitution, to make it accommodate states instead of regions, uh, and also said um, something about the constitutional reviews that we have now, because, I mean, the constitutional reviews have started. Um, it's, they're moving to different states and different parts of the country. Now, if we are to look at the constitutional reviews that we're having, because this 1999 constitution has been reviewed and amended in 2011, if I'm not mistaken, and now we're in 2021 and it's being amended. Going back to the history of this 1999 constitution, it was drawn up by a military uh, government, which means that we should not necessarily be using that constitution under a democratic system. And, and we're going on how many years now? So why are we even reviewing this constitution why can't we write a whole new constitution? We've had confabs, we've had committees. I mean, is there anything too different? I mean, I mean, I know that drawing a constitution is a whole different ball game, but would it not be better to have a whole new constitution other than having these amendments over and over again and then still having to complain about the loopholes that will still emerge? Yeah, um, first, before I answer that question or I explain further regarding to the question. We need to understand that from 1914 till, 19, till 1960 or 1963, Nigeria had a total of, uh, of about seven, about six constitutions. We had the first one, which was termed the Lodugas Constitution. That was the amalgamation constitution in 1914. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, there were still agitation, which culminated in, into having the 1922 constitution. From 1922, that didn't solve the problem. There were still agitation that led us to the 1946 constitution. From 1946, we had another one in 1951, then another one in 1954. Then, of course, we had another one, uh, that was in 1950. Uh, in 1958, which now became the 1960 Constitution. Mm -hmm. And soon after that, we had this 1963 Constitution. And, uh, of course, we had another uh, constitutional conference in 1989. They, uh, that one, the Constitution didn't see the light of the day. Then again, we'll move on to 1979. Okay, 79, 89. Then finally, 1999. Hmm. Then... 
One thing that I want us to understand regarding 1999 Constitution, that Constitution was not made for democratic governance. It was not made for. The Constitution was an idea muted, muted by one man in order to uh, have the country run under his apron strings, hmm. in order to have the country run the way he can easily manage. It, 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 at best, and and, and we're still okay. using that constitution, the, the twenty constitution something years down the line. Like a military rule. Okay. I, okay. Yes, I agree with you that we we do not need to. But the best thing that should happen in order to move Nigeria forward is to is to retire that constitution, have another constitution that will be. There will be people oriented. Okay. Then again, looking okay. at but, the Barsabina, just just hold just just hold that thought. Look at the preamble. I'm sorry. Can you just hold that thought because we're being joined by, by Barrister Jideo Logan. He's on the phone. Let's just get to Barrister Logan. Um, Barrister Jideo Logan. I'm sorry. I know that you have had troubles joining us, um, but now you're on the phone. Um, the question I I just asked him is, I mean, we all obviously we have the judiciary, we have lawyers, we have the MBA. And the issue of the 1999 constitution keeps coming up and going back into, you know, um, the dark. It comes back out when we have issues such as the one that we're experiencing now in the country. Why has it not been pushed? I mean, I know that we really don't have lobbyists in Nigeria, but why has the NBA and lawyers, we've had attorney generals who understand and inter interpret the law, that have been okay somewhat with the 1999 constitution, even when it is not democratic in nature. Yet, the National Assembly is embarking on another some, uh, form of constitutional review in 2021. Shouldn't we be jettisoning it in its entirety instead of trying to see how we can plug loopholes here and there that might emerge yet again? Let me start by responding to that brilliant uh, request that Constitution is a body of principles or precedents by which a state will be governed. And we know that there are some countries that do not even have written constitution and they are prospering. So I think the agitations we are having in Nigeria is because we have mismanaged the country. I mean, it's my personal opinion that there is no perfect constitution in any part of the world. And like Dr. Dobina has exposed, which we have you know, studied in history, we have had several constitutions, but how far have we benefited? Barista Obina, please turn off your television so that we can hear Barista Logan. Hello? Please turn off your TV, Barista Obina, so we can hear Barista Logan. Thank you. Go ahead. And you see, let's take a scenario. We have a motto in our constitution that should be the kernel of our relationship. It says unity and faith, peace and progress. Do you actually need any written document to be united as a people? My answer is no. It has to do more about the drivers of the leadership process. If you want people to be united, you can unite them. So we may even come up with a fresh constitution if the orientation of governance does not change in Nigeria, we will also be calling for a repeal or amendment of that We apologize, sir. We're having connection issues with Barista Gideo Logan. But let's go back to Barista Albina if we can get him. Uh, Barista Albina, can you hear me? Just like Barcel Logan is making reference, I think I would let him come back and, and speak more on that. But let's move on to other issues. Let's talk about other constitutional conferences. We had the National Confab under the Good Luck Jonathan administration. The APC did not show up for that constitutional conference. When the APC became the, gov the leadership of the day, they also had uh, the governor of Kanu uh, Kaduna State, uh, Nasser El Rufai, to come up with a constitution, uh, rather... Um, a committee on restructuring Nigeria on true federalism. Um, and they came up with, um, you know, a document. That document, as we speak, is gathering dust. And I always ask, what's the essence of these confabs and these recommendations and 
uh, the fact that we never get to use them. Why waste taxpayers' monies if we're not really going to make any use of it? And then what's the, what's the guarantee that this one that they're embarking on is not another wild goose chase that will bring us back to square one? Okay, um, first, I, let, me, let me quickly um, um, disagree with what uh, my learned friend said that uh, is the drivers of the Constitution that, uh, uh, that made it impossible for 1999 Constitution to work. That's not true. The 1999, is it the drivers of the 1999 Constitution that made governance expensive in Nigeria? The Constitution there provides for federal character, empowering the president to appoint ministers representing the states when you appoint 36 and maybe possibly six ministers, won't you pay them? The Constitution has issues. Look at the derivation principle in the Constitution. So many things. Look at uh, uh, Chapter 2 of that Constitution that should drive a, a, an egalitarian uh, country. That uh, Chapter 2 is not justiciable. I can, I can bet you, if we continue... Uh, this alteration of the 1999 Constitution, it may not finish. A time will come when all the sections would have been altered and Nigerians may not even know the Constitution that they are using. Then regarding the issue, what, what you said, I, what, I want the authorities to listen. Constitutional conferences... Uh, are not just something that is organized maybe for a jamboree. No. Constitutional conferences usually are platforms where the burning issues in the country, the disagreements, the things that uh, both the majority and the minority are seeking for, they come through a, a constitutional conference and rub minds together, possibly all the sections now listen and hear them out and possibly agree on something. So to that extent, any time a constitutional conference is organized, please, the authorities should endeavor, endeavor to implement it. Maybe if we had implemented 2014, constitutional conference. Maybe the kind of challenges that we have today will not be there. Because the 2014, also the one organized by the immediate past government, had some of the issues that Nigerians are detecting for today, settled in that constitutional conference. So constitutional conference or conferences are usually uh, convoked in order to solve problems. Let's talk so about let's talk about the no go control, areas. Please they should endeavor. The white sorry. Let's talk about the no go areas because as and much as mean. as much as the recommendations I mean I I remember vividly um, a handful of the recommendations from the National Confab that was um, um, done under the good luck um, Jonathan administration. But then there were no go areas. In other words those areas that were supposedly no-go areas are some of the things that we are battling with in the country. There's some of the unsaid things that we, we, we need to be, uh, address as a country. So why should there be no-go areas in any constitutional um, conference or any confab or whatever committees on restructuring or federalism? Why should there be no-go areas if we really want to address the needs and the wants of the people in that piece of paper? Yes, um, I, ideally, uh, there shouldn't be no go area or areas. There shouldn't be no go areas. But I think the reason for no go uh, to the reason for uh, itemizing areas, particularly uh, areas, uh, part particularly as it has to do with uh, balkanization or succession. Uh, I think that area, maybe the reason for making that a no-go area is to, is to guide the conference. Okay. But I think, that, I think that if you do all the other things, 
suggested or agreed upon by the by the various communities of various states or regions that, that make up Nigeria. The issue, that particular one that is regarded as no girl area, will just be something that nobody will be interested in. Okay. For instance, oh, uh, yes, for I'm, instance, so, I'm sorry, I'm so years, sorry, one more time. The, we need to get Barisa Logo okay. back in because he's back, uh, unfortunately. Uh, his connection is not too friendly today. Barisa Logo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry about all the connection issues. Um, before you went off, we were talking about, you know, um, why we need, uh, why we're still using the 1999 constitution. But let me push something else to you because we're running out of time. Um, and you can still answer all of them. Um, we, we actually are operating a unitary constitution, parroting itself somewhat as a federal system uh, or a federal constitution. Now, my question is, why have we um, continuously um, disguised these things? It, could it be that the people who are in power are benefiting from this disguised, somewhat unitary, somewhat, um, you know, uh, federal, uh, federalism source of constitution. Why, again, I'm going back to the question that I asked you, why is the NBA, the judiciary, the bench, why are you not pushing against this? Because we see all of the cracks in the wall as a result of these shrouded constitutional or processes of governance as opposed to a democratic system that we're supposed to be running. You know, I, I, I quite align myself with the position of Dr. Obina, and I just want to use a clear precedent. Right now, the judiciary is on strike, all right? Why? Because the governors who are supposed to be subject to the rule of law have refused to respect the provisions of the Constitution. And that is the premise I prompted my argument from that it's not about the constitution you have, really, though it matters, but how willing you are to implement them. The chapter two that Dr. Obina referred to, if the Nigerian government has focused on chapter two and implemented it up to 60%, Nigeria will be the third richest country in the world today. And that is my position. So even before we start talking about constitution, we must first synchronize our efforts, unite as a people, revive the vision for national development in line with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. If not, there will be gross disrespect of the so-called constitution. Let me ask you a simple question. There is something we are debating right now on the ban on open grazing. How can someone come up to say that because you have the liberty of that constitution to stay in any part of the country, do business in any part of the country, that you can go and back on criminality. That is what we are talking about. So are we really, are we really together? Are we, are we all benefiting from this arrangement? The answer is no. What has happened to NNPC? NNPC that accounts for over 80% of the revenue of the country is driving us to zero revenue now. Who are the people driving the subsidy? Who is in charge of NNPC? My president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces is the substantive uh, minister in charge of petroleum resources. What is the spirit of, what is the expectation of that ministry to Nigerians? These are things we are talking about. We have about 40 security agencies in the country, and yet the level of insecurity is a threat to not just to Nigeria, but to the whole world. So for, for I, Gideon Logo, it, it, it goes beyond pushing for a new constitution, amendment of the constitution. Are we willing as a people to develop? Mm -hmm. If yes, I believe that even with this present constitution we have, we can still move on. I, I pay my due respect to the regionalism and everything. Even if, if, if we are going back to regionalism now, are we, no, are we going to pick it at the, at the level of uh, geopolitical zones? Are we going to pick it at the level of 36 states and Abuja? So there are issues, but we have a global expectation. Zero tolerance for hunger, zero tolerance for insecurity, prosperity, empowering the people, maximizing resources. Is it the fault of the constitution, for example, that we have 
a government that has gone borrowing from 12.12 .12 trillion naira in 2015, we are now over above 30 trillion naira. And what can we show for it? Is it the fault of the constitution, for example, that we are going to spend $1.5 billion trying to fix a refinery? So I believe that it's either we decide, like Dr. Obina has insinuated, we had the confab in 2014 or thereabout. Are we, in, are we a people together? Or does a section want to oppress the other? And that is my own concern. Okay. It's not about the documents you have. I'm a lawyer, so I can tell you that. It is about your willingness to respect the provisions of the documents you have. Okay. The document may be faulty, but I am advising all our great uh, audience, take time to read from section 14 to section 17 of this present Constitution of Nigeria, Nigeria as amended, irrespective of how flawed it is. If the outlined provisions in section 14 to 17 are carried out to 60%, Nigeria will be the third richest country in the world. Okay. We have a law that says the governors of the state can manage the lands in their community. Now we are saying that they cannot make laws to manage the land. People can graze anywhere. You know, so we need to first discuss our unity and we say right. it's a no-go area. Why is okay. it a no-go area? Amos territory says can two work together except they be agreed. Okay. So that's my position, ma. And uh, Dr. Obina. All right. Um, we have to go. We have just th 20 seconds. You keep saying that we have to decide. I'm guessing that if you go to the average Nigerian on the street right now and ask them what they want, they'll say they want peace, they want security, they want unity. They want to be able to live anywhere in this country and not feel like they're outsiders or they want to be able to sleep in their homes and close with their eyes closed. So when you say we, are we the ones that are in the way or the we there? Are you referring to the people who have been stifling? Um, we make know, reference to the people, and I can let you know so what majority what of people are saying now is that we go our logo, different What ways. power do the people have and in this regard? The are also expressing it. We are divided right now. The unity is not there. The equity and, is and, not and, there. And, and who's responsible the for this division? There. Who's responsible for this division? Have we always been divided? Or Two have women. we... Or, or, exactly. Section protection 2 of the Nigerian constitution. 1999, as amended, says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Are they discussing review of constitution in Switzerland, in Sweden, in Australia, in Rwanda? I mean, let's 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 wake up. Okay. The All government right. has a responsibility to unite the people and prosper the people. Okay. If not, why are they there? Well, we have to go. Unfortunately, we Why have to leave it there. there. We have to leave it there. Barista Jiri Ologun, Barista Obinachuku, thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Let's hope that uh, this conversation will continuously unfold and we will be back here to analyze it more.